QuickBooks Online user permissions, how to set up a new user. Quick answer is to go to the gear icon in QuickBooks Online, then to manage users and add user. And that's right here, like I said, gear icon, manage users, we'll take you to this screen and add user. So uh, we'll get into a little more detail. I like to start every video with a quick answer for those people who only have uh, 20 seconds or so to watch a video on a particular subject. But anyhow, uh, so different users of QuickBooks Online are going to have different needs. Okay, so your basic categories of users are company administrator, standard user, reports only, time tracking only. Company administrator is somebody who can perform all the tasks in QuickBooks Online. For example, owner, trusted manager, or accountant. Uh, standard user is going to be somebody where you can pick and choose what they have access to. For example, an employee. Uh, additionally, you might have uh, an employee who you only want to have give the ability to run reports. Um, so that would be a reports only user. Uh, reports that they can't run will be payroll and reports with contact information. And uh, there's the option for people to enter their time tracking only. And they can only see their own timesheet. And that, uh, for example, might be an employee also, but also a subcontractor. So, as I mentioned, I could create a new user. Uh, you want to go to the gear, the manage user, users. It's in the your company section. Over here, second option. That will bring you to this screen. And after you enter users, you'll have a list of them here. Uh, in this case, since this is a sample company, I don't have that. But um, to add a new user, you're going to click that green button, add user. Then you're going to select user type of the four we just mentioned, standard user, company admin, reports only, or time tracking only. Then you're going to select uh, their access rights and or user settings. And you enter the contact info, and they'll get sent an email notification. And then uh, from there, they'll sign in to confirm the access. And we'll walk through all of that here in a second when we talk about uh, each of the individual users. So payroll access is, uh, for the standard user in particular, you decide that. And um, it's on the select access rights screen. And what it'll do if they don't have access is uh, mask individual payroll information. So, oops. <clears throat> for instance, uh, if you go to the workers employees screen, um, let me, I'll get back in that. The employees screen, and then, um, they won't be anything shown for them. They'll be notified that they have a lack of access rights. And of course, that won't reflect here because this is a sample company and I do have access rights as the accountant in the sample company. Uh, let's see, the transaction report will show payroll entries, but uh, it will mask names. So we'll, you know, we'll show the dollar amounts, but um, we'll make uh, the individuals behind those dollar amounts anonymous. And then uh, same thing with the bank register. Okay, so that's how that handles uh, a standard user that uh, doesn't have payroll access. And, um, you know, none of this is an option in the sample company, but uh, did want to cover that uh, just so you knew on uh, those particular options, what uh, each of them would mean. So we'll start first with the uh, a simple one, which would be company admin. And uh, the only kind of exception you can make here is to specify if this user is uh, your accountant. Of course, you would probably want them to have access to everything. Uh, like the owner would, and uh, you can only have one account and user. It doesn't count towards the user limit, but uh, you select company admin, you click next. All you got to do is enter the first name, last name, and email. 
and save, and they'll get sent their invitation to log in and confirm access. Next is the standard user, where again, it is the option that's going to have the most, um, the option that's going to have the most options, I guess you could say. So your first decision to make, uh, you click standard user, click next, then is how much access do you want this user to have? All access, which isn't the same as company admin, um, no access, or limited access. So when it's limited, it can be limited to customers and or vendors. And uh, if you give customer access to the standard user, they can do things like enter estimates, invoices, sales receipts, statements, charges, credits, customers, products, services. They can adjust sales tax. They can receive payments. They can run sales related reporting and uh, other tasks along those same lines. If you give them access to vendors, they can enter bills, purchases, vendors, uh, new vendors, edit vendors, products, services, uh, pay bills, write checks, and run um, purchasing related reporting. Okay, and then other tasks related to the purchasing function. What they can do is if you select limited is edit accounts, edit quantities on hand, view bank registers, or see income and expenses. So all that's here. And you click um, limited and then click customers. See, so it gives you kind of a rundown of what they can do, what they can't do. If you click vendors, same thing. What they can do, can't do. So say limited customers and vendors uh, for the access rights. <clears throat> And it's going to take you to user settings. Go to the next slide. And here you can specify whether this user has the ability to edit other users. So obviously yes, no, or only view them. Um, edit company, company information. You can select yes or no. And then finally manage subscriptions, which would be like apps, for instance. Yes, no, view only. Specify all that. Click next. Same thing. First name, last name, email. They'll get sent their invitation. Okay. Then the reports only access rights and user settings. Um, it's pretty straightforward. You select it and you send the invitation. Not much in the way options there. And finally, time tracking only access rights and user settings. Select that, go to next. Uh, then you have the opportunity here to select the name from the drop down menu. And if you don't see them, then you can add a new employee and or vendor. You see a list there, vendors. We we'll keep scrolling. I believe Sample Company has a couple of employees. Okay, select whomever or uh, add new from the top. Next, first name, last name, email. Uh, if you select add new, it's as simple as uh, entering a name and then what they are, an employee or a vendor. Select that from the drop down menu. That is it as far as uh, user permissions, adding new users. So if uh, you know, you're know you somewhat new to QuickBooks Online or maybe been using it for quite a while and uh, or any other bookkeeping software for that matter and uh, just find it time consuming. And uh, frankly, it isn't your cup of tea. It's something you have to force yourself to do, kind of a drag. Uh, you might take a look at BotKeeper. There will be a link down in the description. And uh, what they do is automatic bookkeeping tasks. Uh, and that allows you, of course, to work more on your business, unless on bookkeeping, data entry, those sorts of things. Uh, BotKeeper uses uh, AI with a human element to handle your bookkeeping. The AI handles the uh, routine stuff, the human element 
qualifies the transactions, uh, you know, gets a human set of eyes on everything and uh, allows you to spend more time helping your business grow, less time on menial tasks, and uh, hopefully more time running, like being able to make more sales. So, yeah, that link is down in the description. And that's it for this video. If uh, you like this video because I started out getting straight to the point with the quick answer, but uh, then you also like the fact that I uh, went in a little more detail on everything, you can show how much you liked it by giving it a like. And uh, if you look at my channel or the playlist, uh, you'll notice I'm putting out uh, QuickBooks Online videos pretty regularly. So if uh, you find yourself looking up uh, how to information on QuickBooks Online fairly frequently, you can subscribe. So then you will know to come to the Spreadsheets for Business YouTube channel. Check there first. Might save you some time and some effort. But uh, anyhow, appreciate you watching this. Take care.